Hi everybody, this is the Rambling Toffee Podcast. I am Mark. I hope everybody's doing well this Monday. Uh, the sun is shining. Um, I hope everybody's going to have a good week um, and just not try not to think about uh, what happened on Saturday. Um, it was uh, for me, you know, as I mentioned about these podcasts that I do, I want to talk about the game, talk about the performances, talk about how we played. Um, but obviously it's been taken over by points deductions here and basically takeovers there and it's you know i've even given a short period of time to actually talk about the game each game that we have been playing um it was another home game we've had four points given back obviously from the points deduction it's west ham west ham are not doing they've been on and off off on and off the boil most of the season but they're still a good outfit in a sense of the word and you know for my Going to that game on Saturday, I was quietly optimistic and I just thought, you know, okay, against Brighton, you talked about Brighton. Tactically, it was set up. It was set up in a way to, at the end of the day, it felt like it set up in a way to make it hard to beat, to get a result, you know, to get a point, really. That's my attitude to the Brighton game. And it nearly became three points. But, you know, by the by, we come to a home game, and as we've all been discussing most of the season at home, our home form is shocking. I think, you know, for a record, it's three wins this season at home, and that's not good enough. And the only thing that's keeping us going afloat is our away form um, and our way uh, form and tactics and, and, and the formation that's been set up and continually been doing okay away from home. But at home, it's just been terrible, terrible, terrible. And as a fan, season ticket holder that I am, you know, I hope. It's always the hope, you know, as a football fan, you hope to go to a game of football and see your team play well, get a result, get the three points and just, you know, move up the table. And because obviously with the points deduction that we had and then obviously we got four points back, we still got a second charge upcoming, but you know that we could get another six points passed down to us again. I don't know. We'll, we'll just have to wait and see. That's not, not far away. I think it's April when we might find out about that, um, and if we'll appeal it or not. But that's something in hope in in the future. But again, I'm going to the game. It's West Ham. You look at the team that's coming out. The core is back in. You think you know he's been our, our goals. You know scoring goals for us. This season, but mostly away from home. So something's different. Why he's not making as much an impact at home, playing a very similar formation that we play away from home. So I don't know if it's something different in the tactics and the way that we play when we're away. Is there a freedom there when when we're playing at away grounds at the moment? I don't know. Is there a pressure, obviously, from us the fans? More and more, the pressure onto the players and the players got the pressure on themselves to try and get a result and try and get a win and and it's playing on their mind is it psychological in that sense <clears throat> but you know from the perspective that i have is that you know i came into that game thinking you know go for it you know we've got four points back a little bit more optimism let's go and try and you know get a result you know and then i looked at the team and then Beto was starting and Calvert Loom was obviously on the bench. And I thought, okay, obviously there must have been a is that a tactical situation to try something a bit different? Trying Beto up front and giving Calvert Lewin, you know, a bit of a rest or something and then letting him come on later on. I don't I don't know, but you know, obviously Beto give him an opportunity again. But you know, as much as his ad, you know, the way that he plays, and it's frustrating. And instantly, you know, you think to yourself, okay, let's give him that chance. Let's see what he can do. You know, inconsistently over the season that he has been playing and given opportunities, he's gotten opportunities in the game to score goals, and he's missed them. Guilt edge opportunities. The ball going to an always seem to bounce off him. I don't know. You know, is it is he going to be a success for us in the future? Will it, is it because the way that he's you know he's been developed, or you know to adapt to the Premier League and adapt to the way that we play and the way that 
the fast pace and the way that he's playing, maybe that's having a hindrance on his performances. Maybe I have to give him more time. Maybe it's just one of those things because he's coming from another league. And maybe just that could be it. I don't know. But he's not been what we paid that money for. And obviously we got him on a Klarna. So, you know, hopefully. But every time he plays and I looked at that and I thought, OK, give him an opportunity. Let's see what happens. You never know. We might go out there and put a great performance in and do, you know, do really, really well. Hope. Again, it's all about hope. And then and I looked at the team. Harrison was back in, obviously. Ashley Young was on the bench. They decided to bring Harrison back into the game. Anana started it. Obviously, the rest of Gay's injured. Anana started. He had Garner, Anana, um, which has been doing okay in games this season, that combination. Um, McNeil playing on the other side. McNeil's form has been really bit on, on and off. And he's... Uh, but on Saturday, we start the game. Every you know, there was just hope, as per usual. And the first twenty minutes, it was like they, again. I've said this over and over again. It's like they don't know how to play football with each other. They don't know how to pass. It was like the first twenty minutes or so. It was like trying to pass the ball for one another. It was like they were giving the ball away again. And it was just like, what, what, what are they doing in training? What's happening in training to get them in a position to, you know, to the footballers, the whole purpose of when they got into football, like at, at one point in time, I was a semi-professional footballer. I learned how to play football was by passing the ball to one another, passing the ball around, playing different, you know, triangles and different things and, and actually knowing what you do with the ball. But it was just like when you had it, it was like a hot potato, hot potato. And errors were being made. And it was like, I can't believe the fact that West Ham, who had been struggling themselves this season, okay, they come up a, a win against Brentford, who are not doing exactly uh, great at the moment. But they got, you know, they come in and they had opportunities. They had more, you know, it's like they had ball. They're not exactly firing on cylinders at the moment. But if that was like so Liverpool or any of Top the top clubs who will be ripped apart right from the get go. We got away with it again, but I don't know what was going on. But one of the things is that this is what frustrates me about Sean Dyche, and it's like every home game, every away game, it's same old, same old. Pass to the you get Jordan Pitford launching it up to um, Beto and launching it and try and get any drop downs. And then, then they do try a bit of football, but it's always further back defensively and in the middle. And Anana's getting the ball, and it, and we want him to get forward and start getting passes and trying to get opportunities and get forward. And that was grad. It it wasn't until the second half that we started to see opportunities and creating the opportunity, and getting into positions that we did, but. We then, you know, it was getting to near half time, and obviously, for the first time in a long, long time, we got a penalty. And it's from Pawson as well, the referee. I couldn't believe it. He, I don't know, even know why he was refereeing our games because the amount of times he sent our players up and all the really terrible decisions that he made over a period of time. And the fact is that it was a handball, and he, st he still didn't even give a penalty. He had to be told by VAR to go and have a look at the screen. But then, this is where I look at the captain here, Tarkovsky, to actually make a decision here. Because Beto got the ball, put it on the spot. And instantly, when I saw him, I thought, he's going to miss that. It's our first penalty in God knows how long. He's going to miss it. And if I was a betting man, I would have thought, well, I'll go and um, put a bet on that, that he'll miss that, and I'll probably get some money back. And everybody else around me, it was that, because it's the first time we've had a penalty in a while, and I know Tom calvert Lou normally takes the penalties, but the last one he took, he missed. So obviously he was on the, but he was on the bench, but is there anybody else who wanted to take up the opportunity, you know, to actually score or have more confidence? Because this is the issue. You've got a striker there 
who is low on confidence and score low on confidence as regarding scoring goals and you know the chances that he's got to you know when he has had them he's always missed them and everything else so his confidence there so he's stepped up which is fine is he the second in command if Dominic Calvert-Lewin is not playing who is the designated penalty taker on the field was it decided he would take it or was there somebody else on the field who not who was designated to take the penalty and decided not to and this is where the captain needs to go and actually make decisions saying you you know talking to the right people who is confident enough to take that penalty we got one and in, in, and that's what happened he missed it it was a poor penalty but then again afterwards well we go into the second half in a minute but their goalkeeper had a blinder and this is where the confusion lies with me at the moment i was seething after that after the result on saturday not just you know and i can go back and say oh yes we created loads of opportunities their goalkeeper had a blinding game made saves it was you know it's just like nothing was going past him we had one cleared off the line in the second half as well so we get to the second half, we come out, we're a little bit better, we're getting forward a bit more, we are create getting forward. Persistence in the end paid off, we got a goal, and it was better we scored. And it was great, and it was great for his confidence to score that goal. And it was on his head, simple, wonderful cross when Garner got whipped that one in. And basically, because we've had most of the you know, first half or any opportunity when Harrison's had a ball, or at McNeil, getting balls in the box. He was just not hitting anybody, especially Harrison. He was getting constant opportunities to get the ball into the box, and they were not. The arrival deflecting off their left, the right back, or was it? Yeah, their left back constantly in that second half. Every time he was getting the ball, trying to whip it in, it was getting off. You know, their left back constantly, or it was hitting the centre back. There was there was nobody. None of our players getting on the end of any kind of crosses in that second half and that's the frustrating thing and as much as we created chance after chance after chance that we had but it was like every shot was either you know too near to the goalkeeper so it's mostly very much easy kind of saves for him and that deflected shot that Beto had which looped when you look at it back it, it was quite a simple save to make and in that instance but as i mentioned at the start see start of the game uh start of this podcast it's been going all season where we get in opportunities we shooting we strike i don't know if it was like 22 shots we had 11 on target in that game and it was just bang after that and this is what happens you keep on going at it and you put in the effort to get into those positions and then the inevitable happens. They go down the field, they get a corner, simple corner, flick, back into, into the back of the net, one all. And then we kept on going, trying to create. That's what we kept on doing. I'm not taking away them create, you know, we, we, we're creating opportunities. It was there, you can do it. But it was just like... They needed to take responsibility to be confident enough in the positions that they were in to really make it tell that when they go into shoot, that they, you know that it was the right thing to do. And you know, but they didn't take the responsibility. They were just like, well, we'll just blast at it and just see if it goes in. We'll just blast at it there. There was not any thought in what Ever Everton were doing with the ball when you did get the opportunities. And of course, he then, and I'll get back to the tactical situation or the substitutions that were made again late as usual. And this is what happens next: is that you won all, you bring Beto off, who has just scored that goal, and seems to be, you know, as much as his performance was ball, you know, he was getting through the game and he was, you know, getting the ball, getting it, trying to get do his job. To the best that he was doing at that point in time, he brought Calvert Lewin on, and he did one or two good things. But again, the same old, same old. McNeil had an off game again. 
He had that shot, obviously, in the second half, which the goalkeeper saved. He parried it, but he he was out of sorts. And again, if you see that as a fan, you think, right, McNeil's not playing well. Harrison is getting the ball, but he's not. his crossing is not very, very good. We need to do something about it. And on the bench, you know, yes, you, you, we don't have a Dan Juma, even if Dan Juma was good enough to come in. But if he, he was an option if he was there, but he's not. And it's just like, who can you bring on? You know, to, and I can understand the manager maybe thinking there isn't anybody to actually bring on as Ashley Young. You know, and everybody talks about Ashley Young, and you look at his age, and he's, 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 you know, as a defender, he's been poor for us. His pace is terrible. His age is an indicator that he shouldn't be playing really for Everton Football Club. That's my poor personal view. He's played in that midfield um, play, position where you know Harrison's been taking on, and. You know, he's not he's not good enough anymore. He's not the pace of the game is passing him by. And if you bring him on, you're taking Harrison off for Ashley Young, and that just shows you how our team is so limited. We haven't got a backup to come on unless you decide to put Seamus Coleman in the midfield position to let him get forward, and that just shows you how badly the team is at the moment in a sense of um, how weak the team is as regarding players that we can bring on to actually change it we haven't got those players to actually do that and that's the concerning thing I mean the only other option you probably have is going to a 4-4-2 I know Harrison came up and Garner moved in that position but Garner is better in the central position well better than I can be and he was put in on the wing and you know, that cross, obviously, before that change was made, when Harrison came off, Garner moved in, and then we, you know, we went with Anana, Decore, and, you know, Gomez. And Gomez is a good centre centre midfielder. He can keep the ball. He can pass it around. He can, you know, be calm in that situation. I think he did really well, but he came on way too late to actually make any kind of impact. Um, in the game, I think he came on when we were still one all, and then of course, ninetieth minute. You know, it's a fantastic goal, but <sighs> defensively, where was Mikalenko in that situation? Because the back post was being left, and he just got the ball and walloped it into the top corner. Game over. And for me, and I don't lead the game normally, but I, as soon as that went in, it was ninetieth minute. I know we had five minutes. <laughs> of injury time left of the game. I just left and then obviously he got a third. Uh, but Gomez, I believe, you know, he came on and he did better than what Anana was doing. Um, and that, you know, he's more composed on the ball. He's able to get, you know, doing the passing and moving around a bit better. But that's just been our season and that's just been how our home games, mostly our home games have been like, is that, we create all loads of opportunities. They talk about the XG. I don't give a shit about the XG. We need to be scoring goals. The whole purpose of a game of football is to win football matches. It's a results business. That's what it's all about. It's not about XGs and stats and all sorts of things. And it's all well good bringing all that out. What what does it do? Make you feel a little bit better that we've actually created more of loads of chances in the game. Doesn't matter. Those chances have to go in the back of the net. They have to go in. If we had got that, I can go on and on and on about this game, but basically we went one up and then um, a chance Harrison got the ball in and McNeil blasted the ball from how many yards out right into the goalkeeper's midriff. And basically, if it went any other side, we would have been two up. It would have knocked the stuffing out of uh, West Ham and we, momentum would have shifted. We would have a little bit more confidence, more, more compact, change things maybe, make it a little bit, Harder for them to even try and get in, but no, we didn't. That that was it. As soon as that happened, they went and got the equaliser, and it, the momentum started to shift gradually as we got to the end, and it was it was over, and it was just like, you know, what's the point? So my my view is that 
XG, you can do one. You can talk about all these wonderful stats and everything about it. And you can say we create loads of opportunities, but it's a result of business. We're where we are at the table. We need to win games. We need to move forward. We need to get somewhere. We need to get away from their relegation places because we've got a second charge against us. And if we get another six points and we appeal, if deducted, if we appeal, we might not find out if, you know, until after the season had ended to find out if we are staying up or not staying up. But it would be nice that we, to get that result. And it was a wonderful opportunity to come away with three points, give us a little bit of momentum after the week that we've had, that we got some points back and we move forward. And then we can go on to the next game because the next game is Manchester United away. And they played for a certain period of time against Manchester City yesterday. He played okay, and they're going to be a very, very difficult uh, proposition for us. And then, of course, then we're going to be, you know, we've got away games coming up. It's not until April that we get the likes of uh, Burnley and uh, Sheffield United, you know, and Brentford at home, and as we lead to the end of the season, they're going to become massive, massive, massive games. But we've got, the, we're going to be missing a game because now the Liverpool game obviously has been. Um, you know, mood. So that's going to be some point in in April. When I don't know, midweek probably. So we, you know, there's that's going to be a difficult, obviously, because they're fighting for the title. So they they want probably want to get a result against us. So it's going to get difficult and difficult to, for us as we get to the end of the season because we've got a, a lot of role games in May that against a lot of teams further up the table and you know it's going to be tough but it would have been nice to try and get three points on on Saturday and you know I'll, I'll just mention this uh, you know I mentioned about Sean Dyche you know and he said in the, in the interview afterwards he said that the players need to take responsibility for what they do on the field I think Tarkovsky said something very similar players who are missing chances that you know they need to be putting them in the back of the net or else that happens and it's happening too many times and it's happened from the start of the season and it continues to be that way and something has to give and it's all well and good that our away form is actually keeping us going keeping us afloat basically but you know as much as people can say that if we had our 10 points back we would have been 12 and we were matter what worried about that but we lost against West Ham, it could have been the same scenario still, that we play this way and we still come away with defeats. And this is, you know, has to stop, something has to change. And that's when I put Sean Dyche into this, is that he's only got what he's got in front of him. He can't, you know, at the moment we've got a takeover. He can't, you know, but he is the manager he is the coach with his coaching team. His job is to get the best out of the players that he has in front of him. They may not be great. They may not be, you know, some of the players may not be Premier League standard. But they have to play. We're in the Premier League. We have to try, try and play to stay in this division. And thankfully at the moment, we can only say that, you know, there's two teams in those bottom three that are... Uh, struggling enough that they will probably go down. Luton is a different kettle of fish because even despite the, their defeat the other day, they got they were two down against Villa who were doing really, really well at the moment, but they went to two all and got it back to it. So they are fighting at home to get results. And they're going to have home games. Yes, they're going to have difficult games and they may, they may just continue to keep them losing games, but they still are fighting them. And they still have determination, and they've got some good players in their team, and they're organised. And but there's no kind of pressure on them than they are on us as Everton, you know, Everton Football Club, because we as fans, our opinion is that our club is a Premier League club, and of course it is, and we shouldn't be down there. We shouldn't be down there. We should be further up the table. We should be challenging for Europe. We should be going after 
trophies and we should be that's the level but the team that we have out there is not that level that team out there some of them are championship standard and i'm sorry but that's how i feel about some of the players and even on saturday i know it is some good things but the fact that he has a value of 70 to 80 million because he's potentially he's a he's, he's going to be a fantastic player for for, for whoever he, he moves to but in certain circumstances he's not dictating the game he's not making you know getting the balls doing something going forward with it being that player that everybody talks about is and we see glimpses of this player in moments but we don't see it all the time and we need to see more consistent with that consistency with him the only player in that team that is going to go who's doing well week in week out is Jared Brownfate and he just you know he just glides through games as, as if he's been playing for years and years and years and he's going to go straight to the top anyway and Arna probably no one so you can always look at he will consistently play well week in week out and you but when you look at the rest of the team you don't know what you're going to get with him you don't know what kind of performance you're going to get from him and that that's the problem and that's when we go to home games when we're sitting there like the West Ham game or many other games that we've had at home we don't know what we're going to get we don't know going to get Dwight McNeil having a barnstorm and getting crosses in and shooting and doing all the things that he did last season near the end of last season a Jack Harrison when he came in and initially you know, was doing well for us and getting forward, but now he seems to have tailed off. The pressure is on there, but I don't know if it's because we're putting pressure on them. They shouldn't. You shouldn't really look at the fans and what pressure that we put. They should go out there and put in the performance because they're doing it to an extent away from home. So I don't know what the difference is doing it at home. And then again, it comes back to Sean Dyche and his coaching setup. What they do on training. It's not just about mentality. He talks about that last season. It's about the mentality. It's about changing the mentality of these players to be more, you know, put. And I don't know if that's put pressure, more pressure on them. I don't know. I'm not a football player. And there comes a point, and I know my mate said this to me in the car. It's not on short dice. That was, you know, the performance of the players. They had chances. They, they had countless opportunities to score in that game counter opportunities just it was just same old same old it's not on him he's got that squad that's the players that he has we haven't you know we can't we can't compete with anybody else who can go and buy players or strengthen the squad and have it you know a stronger uh substitutes bench that we can have changes that we can you know feel confident about making changes with the players that we have and we don't have that at the moment and that's because of the bigger picture is off the field we have no money we're in a takeover at the moment you know it's just so so frustrating that this team is mid-table at best and roughly around that that's where they currently are that's my view and that on a good day, when we when they do start to play well together, when they do start putting performances and getting results, when we we have seen that this season, home and away, we have seen performances there. When we bit of confidence, you can see it, and we do we are a mid-table team. That performance on Saturday felt like a relegated team, a team that's coming from the championship going into the championship it feels that way and it feels that that's where it's going and that's where i'm you know i can understand it's not on sean dice but sean dice coaches him day to day week to week year to year month to month, year to year he's one that is instructing his players to do a job to try something that he doesn't try anything different. Everything stays the same. There's no kind of, let's try this today. Let's move this around. Let's you know be a little bit more expansive. Go forward a bit more. 
And it's funny me saying that by the fact that we create loads of opportunities on Saturday. But when you watch the game, a lot of those opportunities came from if Pickford launched it or a mistake by a West Ham player or we got a tackling right or, we, you know, little things that enabled an opportunity. But there was no patterns. There was no way of how to play. It was just like, just launch it and just see if you get a drop down. Just hope that, you know, you can get a tackle in the midfield and you can get forward quickly. They only happened when errors were occurring from the opposition. They were not, you know, we're not getting the ball from the back and just, you know, getting it forward, pass, 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 and getting right through their midfield and creating opportunities that way. They all came from drop downs. They all came from errors. They all came from different. And it was just like, what is that tactic? I just, and, and I sat there, and this is the thing is we create opportunities. We, you know, the goalkeeper main saves and everything else like that. But most of the time, I was seeming, I was angry, I was frustrated with what I was seeing. The performance of the players when they had the football in their feet, passing and making the right passes. They, every time they made a pass, well, it was always, if 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 it's too difficult, they went backwards. And they, there were no, that indicates to me no confidence in themselves playing at home or playing in that tactical, in that formation, that freedom to play the way that they want to play. And it's just like, that's what I was seeing. And I was getting frustrated with it. Despite the fact you can throw, you know, create loads of opportunities. What I was seeing was players having no confidence or no belief in themselves to go for it. You know, to get the ball and grab the ball, you know, grab it by a scruff of the neck. Go for it. You know, get forward. Be creative. Be imaginative. Try something different. That's when you get, say, the manager saying it's the responsibility. Players need to take their responsibility. And they're not taking that responsibility. And if they were more clinical in their own mind, thinking, I'm going to go out there today and I'm going to prove a point that I can play football and I can do my job. And you need that not just from one player. You need that from every player on the pitch. Jared Brantway does it every week in week out and you can see that and he's he's comfortable in his own skin he's confident he's happy and he just knows where his pathway is a lot of those players they just don't have it and i, I can just go on and on and on about this we go up against manchester united away next week we'll set up the same way we'll do the same thing probably calvert luna will probably come back in you know and it, it, you might even decide bring take godfrey off and put seamus coleman in this time i'll get more experience at the back, I don't know, but it'll be same old, same old. And what you'll see is, is that we will probably be very defensive, very, very good. But going forward, we will, it will just be the usual thing that we see away from home, trying to nick one. And it seems to be working the way, but at home it's not. Anyway, I can rumble on and on and on about this, but it's just so frustrating and it just continues on. Um. Yes, you know, takeover. Uh, other other news is still ongoing regarding the takeover. As I mentioned about the the second breach that's going to take place in April. So you know, there's no new stories about that at the moment. Um, it, I just want everything clarified going forward, and just basically want our, our football club to see a light at the end of the tunnel. That there is hope that we can get to the end of the season. Because at the end of the day, I just want to get to the end of the season and just forget about it this season and focus on next season um, and hope that hope is the big thing that there is that light at the end of the tunnel that we have get right people coming in to take over the football club um, I'm not mentioning 777 partners I, I said all along that they're not the right people I just hope there was somebody else out there who may be interested in taking this football club forward um, and of course you know the deduction we might get a couple of points maybe that's what I've heard because it's part of the same re reporting period from uh, the last breach that we had from the accounts then. Um, so we'll see what happens on that. Um, some people are saying we might just get one or two points back uh, deducted. 
if that's the case, then I'll take that probably in my own personal mind just to get it all out of the way and done and dusted and we move forward and then we can hopefully get to the end of the season and we're still in this division and then we can focus on next season because it's going to be our last season in the uh, Goodson Park and I just hope we have a team that can play you know games at home and actually you know win games and play well you know play with adventure and passion and drive you know you the, the commitment's always there I'm not denying their commitment but other than that you know they come across as players that are not good enough for the Premier League um, are not good enough you know but you know on their good day they are good enough it's a weird one of me saying that when they're not playing well and they're not performing like the, the inconsistencies that they have they're not, not good not, they're not good enough Premier League players but when they are and can, and can be consistent and can play you know, game to game and actually play well, then, you know, they can be Premier League players, they can be, but in reality, you know, that's another confusion that I have with this club, with this team at the moment, is that, you know, that's why I'm asking the question, are they? Can you let me know, you know, let me know in the comments below, are they good enough for the Premier League or are they not good enough for the Premier League and are they just championship level players? This Besides a couple of players that are, um, you know, good enough to be in the Premier League and go forward, you know, to become really, 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 really top players, you know, uh, just let me know in the comments below because, you know, I want to believe that they are Premier League standard players and I want to believe that and when they do play well and, he's, and we win games of football, they are, but when we're not playing well and being, and I think, I can't remember the last time we, we last won a game in December. And, you know, you can talk about it now and say that, well, we're not getting results, are we? We're not winning games. That indicates that it's a team that are not good enough for the Premier League and that they are championship standard. Anyway, let me know at the bottom, uh, the comments below. On that note, uh, that's today's podcast. Um, um, a little bit longer than advertised. Um, I don't normally drag on this long, uh, but I'm just, I'm just fed up. Um, I want to go to football matches to be entertained, to be enjoyed. I care about my football club, but you, the purpose of supporting your football team is not is also going to games to be entertained and to see your team win and see your team play well, even if you do lose. But if you play well enough to and lose, I'll take that. It's just that that's just football. It says that's what the competition's all about. So on that note, thank you very much for listening, for watching, if you are watching on YouTube. Um, I do appreciate it. I, I will do a um, another podcast next Monday um, and talk about the Manchester United game, which is taking place obviously on Saturday, um, and we'll go from there. So, on that note, thank you very much for listening. Um, take care, and I'll speak to you all soon. Take care. Bye bye.